Associate Professor Dr. Fawad Farooq sir. I request you Professor Javed Akbar Sayal who is the Professor of Cardiology and ICVD to come on the stage and sit on the panel of experts sir. Thank you. Now, I request you, Dr. Associate Professor Fawad Farooq sir, to come on the stage and start his uh, valuable presentation, sir. Firstly, thank you for the invitation to have a talk on this subject. Actually, unfortunately, things are not ready. We are about to start with our multimedia. But today's discussion is on single pill management in hypertension. Can we have these front lights off? Then it will be... Preferred single pill combination choices in hypertension. Pura andhera na kare, neend aane lagti hai. To front ki bas band kar dein, piche ki thodi do char khuli rahe hai. Beshek. So, when we say this is a new terminology, SPC, single pill combination or a combined therapy, what we are talking about, we are talking about more two or more than two drug in a single pill, which is very commonly there for ages in a way that initially these were with low dose diuretic beta blocker, ACRB with beta blocker, but now we have multiple combinations available with different ranges, different dosages. So what we'll discuss today, we'll go about and see what's the rationale of doing these and which one are the preferred combinations when we are suggesting someone SPC. And are they really needed or not? These are the different things we'll discuss today. First, a very brief overview of hypertension. Because most of the time we think hypertension as a risk factor. But this is cardiovascular and renal continuum of hypertension. You're seeing it start as a risk factor, but, but it affects differently on different organs. Here you are seeing just cardiovascular and renal. So most of the time when we see a patient with high blood pressure, it doesn't mean that he is at this stage. Your patient may be at any of these stages which there they are with hypertension starting with just LVH or microalbuminuria to end stage heart disease or end stage kidney disease. And similarly, hypertension is affecting all major organs. So think of when you're seeing a patient with high blood pressure, your may, patient may be at any stage of any complication of any of these major organs. That's the first thing. Second, blood pressure or hypertension has a very complex pathophysiology. When we say a very complex pathophysiology, that means multiple things are affecting in causing increase in blood pressure. And these factors are maybe transient, permanent, intrinsic, extrinsic. So at times, it's very difficult to judge a baseline pressure of your patient. It's very difficult to say this is the baseline pressure. So this is the second thing about And that's why you have so much variabilities in blood pressure. In a single individual, you can have so much variability. You can't have a straight line blood pressure. It's only possible in one condition when you are under the earth. Otherwise, this tagayur or iska silsila rahega, every beat to beat variation. And different patients behave differently according to the extrinsic and intrinsic environment. Now, with this baseline background, I'm starting with a scenario. And these kind of scenario we very commonly face in our daily routine practice. 50 years, hypertensive male, 
taking an allopril 10 mg having raised blood pressure of up to 160 to 170 systolic and 100 to 110 diastolic for last two months. Usually these kind of patients still do not come to you unless and until have they have some non-specific or specific symptom. The important thing what to do in this situation. Now apparently it is so very simple just dawai badha dena aur ghata dena that is it and that we commonly do and a little 10 le raha hai to 20 kar de ya koi aur saath add kar de that is the way to behave. It is not that simple. When you are assessing a hypertensive patient whether it is newly diagnosed or a pre-existingly diagnosed with increased blood pressure you have to go through these four objectives. It is very important unless and until they are previously worked up. Agar aisa nahi hai so, you have to confirm the diagnosis because previous pathophysiology and variability means that anyone can have high blood pressure without hypertension. So, you have to validate whether he is hypertensive or not. <coughs> Second, always think of etiology. Although 90-95% of the time it is essential hypertension, but 5-10% patient can have secondary. So, at least a rough screening for secondary hypertension as well. Third, abhi jase maine wo continuum dikhaya tha aapko. Increased blood pressure does not mean just hypertension. This patient can have any assist, uh, associated comorbid affecting any of the major organ. Always look for those complications as well. And fourth, the most important other comorbids. And in this other comorbids you have multiple things starting from risk factor to associated diseases which are there taken as compelling or contraindication for drugs. So, a comprehensive assessment is needed. Certainly, out of these four objectives, this one objective is already done because this is a known hypertensive who is already on drug. But even then when you see in your clinic a high blood pressure, always validate this blood pressure with previous and succeeding readings because even this blood pressure can be a transient increase otherwise this patient may have normal resting blood pressure. So, he needs validation whether his baseline pressures are similar of that kind which he is having but here the background is so strong that he is saying for last two months this happening that his blood pressure are in the ranges of these readings. That is further validating the issue that this patient is having uncontrolled blood pressure with single pill on board. But still, it is not just go and increase the dose. Yes, you can add on anything, but you need to work on up, work up. Regarding diagnosis, although ye patient to diagnose hai, lekin phir bhi aapko classification ka pata hona chahiye. Jisse aap apne mariz ko place kar sake, ke aapka mariz normal hai, elevated hai, stage 1 hai, stage 2 hai. This is a previous classification which you need to remember and always try to put your patient what kind of patient you are dealing with. That is the first thing in terms etiology we all know always screen for essential or secondary just look for salient features of any secondary cause. Complication we all know is heart, brain, kidney, peripheral vessels, eyes. So, you have to look for a rough screening of these things as well in a way that it can affect these organs acutely or in a chronic persistent method. Other comorbid, you see an hypertensive 95% of the time we have associated one or more than one of these things, either dyslipidemia, diabetes, age, male gender, smoking, family history of premature CAD. So, these you have to look for. Why I will tell you in a moment that you cannot decide targets of your patient without knowing his exact risk status. So, that is why it is important to go through all these things. Additional thing I said is compelling and contraindication. It is very rare to found a pure hypertensive. It usually happens in young patients. But as patient grow older, he used to have some of the other comorbids with him, either IHD, stroke, atherosclerotic disease and multiple things. Similarly, contraindication you have to look for. So, in revision, the same case and think of these four things. Confirm diagnosis or validation of increased blood pressure. 
second etiology complications and other comorbids and these all can be done with a proper history and examination and some preliminary investigation that need to be done on every patient of hypertension or a diagnosed hypertensive coming after a long time with just follow up you have to do these things at least and then specific investigation if needed on your history examination or other uh, positive finding in the preliminary workup target and goals because in every hypertensive you made certain targets that this is my target that his blood pressure should be reduced to this level how to achieve that this was gnc8 which has given you a very simple targets above 60 itna above to ye tha but now the recent acc aha has given you this workup or algorithm that how to go about in different patients if your blood pressure is less than 120 80 which is normal you don't have to do anything promote optimal lifestyle changes and reassess after one year if elevated 120 to 129 systolic and less than 80 is elevated same lifestyle changes are not now we are calling them non-pharmacological therapy because now this man is not normal that's why whatever you are suggesting is a therapy not just lifestyle changes or reassess after 3 to 6 months this group stage 1 hypertension doesn't need treatment straight away here you have to judge atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk status and then decide whether your patient needs drug treatment or non-pharmacological therapy that's why it's important to assess your patient comprehensively it's not just the blood pressure number on which you can decide that this patient should be treated up to this level you have to judge his score if his risk is greater than 10 percent then he needs treatment if less than 10 percent again non-pharmacological therapy in stage 2 patient needs treatment that's the algorithm you have to follow so in conclusively this is the uh, uh, screening uh, risk calculator with which you assess the risk of your patient and the variable in this risk calculator are these sex age rest total cholesterol hdl systolic blood pressure now you see how can you decide about your blood pressure target without knowing the cholesterol of your patient without knowing his diabetes status without knowing whether he's smoker or not so that means even when you're treating blood pressure you have to assess your patient for sake of diabetes, dyslipidemia, smoking, all major risk factors that you have to do. And if we conclude different comorbidities as well, then you can see your targets are different in different patients. I have just make it simplified with that, that in uncomplicated hypertensive, your target is less than 140-90. And in complicated hypertensive, your target is less than 130-80. And what are patients who are complicated hypertensive, who ever have any other comorbidities or multiple risk factors are in this group. Treatment, general measures, lifestyle modification, uh, we have to see when we are choosing drugs. And as a patient who is uncomplicated, having no comorbidity, no compelling or uh, contraindication, Usually the choice is either ACRB or calcium channel blocker and as a second drug we use A plus C and then third is A plus C plus D. Although the latest guidelines these if you see I am just giving you a, a table it is very old in terms of selecting drug according to the comorbidities and I have just highlighted ACE you see ACE is there in hypertension with any of the comorbidities because it has so much evidence in all the comorbidities like in heart failure you can choose ACE as, as your preferable drug apart from hypertension and heart failure post MI ACE high CAD risk ACE even your LV function is normal he's having no MI but he's having definitive high CAD or high CAD risk ACE can be beneficial in terms of vascular protective effect diabetes preferable chronic kidney disease ACE 
and along with it ARBs are on now catching up. Recurrent stroke prevention is so ACE ARB, the RAS blockers are there in every comorbidities unless and until your patient can't tolerate them or there is absolute contraindication of using these drugs. And these are the data with ACE across all the comorbidities, just high blood pressure, CAD, MI, heart failure, diabetes prevention, renal, CVA. So it has ample amount of data with it in terms of controlling blood pressure in taking care of other comorbidities. JNC8 suggestive of taking any of the four as your initial choice. But the latest guidelines are slightly elaborative in a way that they know because if you see your targets in a complicated patients are less than 130 and 80. So most of the time you need two or more than two drugs to really achieve your strict targets. So that's why they have given you a guideline towards after your first choice what you can do as a next agent in selecting other drugs. For initiation of antihypertensive drug therapy first line agents includes thiazide diuretic, CCB, ACE or ARB. So out of these four you can choose any of the one as your first preference agent unless and until there are specific comorbidities which are really compelling you to choose any specific drug or there are any contraindication otherwise you, you can choose any of the four but the second step which <coughs> they have given in guideline initiation of antihypertensive drug therapy with two first line agents of different classes either as separate agent or in a fixed dose combination is recommended in adults with stage 2 hypertension and average blood pressure 20 about 10 above their blood pressure targets. So this is very clear that you can choose two drugs separately or in combination. If your patient's baseline pressures are 20 above the target if it's systolic or 10 above the target if it's diastolic. And second, initiation of antihypertensive drug with single antihypertensive drug is reasonable in adults with stage 1 hypertension, BP go less than 80, dosage titration is equal to that is two. Ki single ko bhi aap badha sakte hain aur right from the beginning do bhi le sakte hain. Lekin ye 2A hai. Preferable ye hai ki aap moderate dosages mein do dawaiyan le lehen jo agar aisi surat e hal hai ki aapke target se systolic 20 badhe hain aur diastolic 10 badhe hain. And this is European society, it has further elaborated what in the combinations. Among all hypertensive drugs, ACE, ARB, CCB and diuretics, and in diuretics, they has again further elaborated, we usually think it's just thiazide. It can be thiazide or thiazide-like drugs like chlorothalidone and indepamide that can be used. Have demonstrated effective reduction of blood pressure in a CV event and thus Combination treatment is recommended for most hypertensive patient as initial therapy and prefer combination should be RAS blockers either ACE or ARB with calcium or diuretic. Other combination of five major classes can be used. Koi aisi harj nahi hai ke fala nahi karni hai ya fala nahi karni hai. Lekin preferred combination yehi hai. ACE, ARB, calcium or aur ye hum पहले भी देखते आए हैं जब हम कंबाइन करते थे 10 20 30 इयर्स से हम देख रहे हैं कि जो कॉम्बिनेशन प्रेफर्ड होते हैं वो या डायरेटिक बीटा ब्लॉकर होते हैं डायरेटिक एसआर भी होते हैं फिर हमने कैल्शियम चैनल ब्लॉकर को इसके साथ ऐड ऑन करना शुरू किया यानी अगर आप बैकग्राउंड देखें तो इनिशियली हमारे पास जब एटेनोलॉल थी तो वी यूज्ड टू गिव एटेनोलॉल विद थायजाइड टू गेट मोर इफेक्ट टू ड्रग्स इन अ सिंगल पिल देन we started adding ACE ARBs with diuretic and we have multiple combinations of ACE or ARB with thiazide. Then we have triple combinations. Then came this ACE ARB calcium channel blocker and now we have even three pills, three drugs in a single pill, diuretic, ACE ARB and calcium channel blockers. And the rationale behind using these was this was the very previous old trial, LHACT, in which chlorothalidone, lisinopril, amlodipine, and doxazosine, these fours were checked 
with each others which is the beneficial giving most of the benefit and in all of these this chlorothaladon which is not a conventional thiazide is thiazide like very long acting not available in pakistan it has given a lot of benefit that's why it was thought that it should be added with any other drug which is there for compelling indications because chlorothaladon is usually not very common for sake of compelling indications because for compelling indications you need either beta blocker acrbs for other comorbids but it's very good drug for additive blood pressure reducing effects that's why we used to have diuretic plus any of the other that was the previous thought then there was a redefining strategy ras plus calcium channel blocker that was thought at why not we combine these two alhat was the background of that and they checked really ras calcium plus ras and thiazide and that was a complete trial and the uh, fee, uh, the rationale was that it was thought a postulate that clinical activity of ras blocker is complemented by natriuretic activity of ccbs may have greater efficacy than their constituent monotherapies and may cause less peripheral edema than cca and that is expected because if you look on to when you are combining ccb with ace or arb what you are doing you are affecting blood pressure by different mechanisms so it gets more effective and they both neutralize each other's side effect in a way that you see ccbs are arteriolar dilator that's why they do cause peripheral edema ccbs are effective in low renin patients and reduce cardiac ischemia that is the dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker do helps you in angina and ongoing ischemia as well while ace or arbs are veno dilators that is if you are getting a pre capillary dilatation the ace are causing post capillary dilatation so reducing the evidence of edema which you got with calcium channel blocker attenuate peripheral edema effective in high renin patient this is because in your patients with hypertension you can have multiple pathophysiologies its issues of sodium renin you, you don't know which of your patient has which kind of hypertension and which pathophysiology is playing a major role so by combining these two rather than increasing calcium channel blocker dose or ace arb dose you are taking care of just one segment of the patient now you are affecting a broader segment of patient in a way that you are taking care of both who have high renin or those who have low renin as well so that's why your spectrum of controlling blood pressure is increased when you combine calcium channel blocker with an ace or arb no effect on cardiac ischemia which additional benefit you are getting with ccb ace arbs have no direct ischemic effect so that you are getting with ccb but what additional benefit you are getting ras blocker chf and renal benefits which are not there with amlodipine or calcium channel blocker and ccb ras activation no renal chf benefit here it's ras blockade because by acting ccbs on arterial dilatation they activate ras which neutralizes slightly the effect and that ras is taken care by ras blocker so you are combining a very efficient way in a way that you are getting maximum benefit with less side effect but that was a postulate it was proven by this accomplished trial and this was the first trial which compares ace along with thiazide or ace along with calcium channel blocker and that become the basis of so initially it was the ace which was used to compare with ace thiazide combination oblique ace calcium channel blocker combination i'm just giving you, you can go and see this trial in detail but overall conclusion was the combination of an ace inhibitor and calcium channel blocker was superior to the combination of diuretic and ace inhibitor so by that the ace or calcium ras blocker and calcium channel blocker has taken the lead as a single pill combination unfortunately we never had any ace calcium channel blocker combination just few i think you are there for few years but since it was no generic and it haven't got that flourish in a way that because you need multiple strengths as well and slight problem with ace is the cough 
so that's why people avoid using it as a single pill combination and secondly the the range which we were having with like i exactly if i say velsartan calcium channel blocker is that a very broad range even now we have triple and with variable dosages so that triple was missing with ace and calcium channel blocker combination that's why in 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 nowadays we were using for years this single pill combination but preferably we were using just velsartan and calcium channel blockers this is just to see the difference between thiazide and thiazide like diuretic that was a meta analysis thiazide like diuretics are clothiridone and indepamide and the conclusion of it because even thiazide is slightly inferior than thiazide and thiazide like diuretic that i am making a ground for indepamide you see indepamide has a very less in a terms of side effect profiles which you can get with your conventional thiazide that's an additional benefit you have with indepamide it's x like a thiazide but it's not actually doing what thiazide do it has additional vaso dilatory effect and that's why this meta analysis conclusion was in conclusion using thiazide like diuretic is superior to thiazide type diuretic in reducing blood pressure without increasing the incidence of hypokalemia hyponatremia or change of blood glucose and serum total cholesterol so even you get this additional benefit with indepamide if you are using them as your let's come to our patient with all of this discussion and everything here we are patient again apparently kitna simple lag raha tha isme karna kya hai enalapril ko 10 se 20 kar denge ya saath kuch add kar denge this patient need comprehensive work up in terms of validation of high blood pressure kyunki isme ye khud bata raha hai ke found to have blood pressure 170 110 do kafi din se to hum isko wo le lenge ke isme hame zyada confirm diagnosis ke issue pe jane ki zarurat nahi hogi but you have to look for etiology aur har hypertensive mein you have to have creatinine urine dr done if you found clues to any other secondary cause always look for that as well complication a comprehensive history for any evidence of ischemic heart disease previous stroke uh, uh, heart failure eyes peripheral vascular disease these all should be done and other comorbids at least work up for dyslipidemia and other things after that let's what will be our management issue in these patients we have to decide targets we have to decide drugs we have to decide which drug isme to issue nahi hai conservative measure ka to koi element hai hi nahi drugs hi hongi aur kya drugs di jaye is patient ko main aapki zindagi aasan kar deta hu ke assessment main khud karke bata deta hu ki wo charo objective se humne assess kar liya mareez ko an assessment reveal increased blood pressure up to 150 70 systolic and 100 110 diastolic according for last 2 years without significant symptom normal examination ho gaya lekin fbs kitni aa gayi 140 halaki ye pehle se non diabetic tha patient cholesterol 202 ldl 135 with normal rest of the investigation ab isko achhi tarah padh le kyunki hum thode bahut sawal jawab comprehensive care pe iski karenge along with high blood pressure और इससे यह भी होगा कि इस किस्म के सिनेरियो जो कॉमनली हम देखते हैं तो उसको हम कैसे एड्रेस करें इन टर्म्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट तो दोनों चीजें कवर हो जाएंगी टारगेट्स इसमें कितने होने चाहिए लेस देन 130, 80। एटी सो नो डाउट ही इज बियॉन्ड बियॉन्ड हिस्स टारगेट यू नीड एटलीस्ट टू थ्री फोर ड्रग्स टू टेक केयर ऑफ हिस्स ब्लड प्रेशर विच ड्रग्स जी कॉमनली हम कॉम्बिनेशन यूज करते हैं इस किस्म के मरीज में और उसका मल्टीपल ट्रायल स्टडीज सब मौजूद हैं कि कंप्लाइंस बेहतर होती है टारगेट अच्छे अचीव होते हैं पेशेंट स्टिक करता है उनसे तो ये इसमें तो कोई राय नहीं है कि हमें इसमें एसपीसी यूज करनी पड़ेगी व्हाट इज एसपीसी सिंगल पिल कॉम्बिनेशन अब हम देखते हैं कि सिंगल पिल कॉम्बिनेशन अवेलेबल वी हैव एग्जिस्टिंग वेलसार्टन एम्लोडपीन एंड थाइजाइड एंड वी हैव दीज थ्री ड्रग्स इन डिफरेंट रेंजेस एज वेल इन अ वे दैट वी हैव सेपरेट वेलसार्टन वी हैव सेपरेट एम्लोडपीन वी हैव सेपरेट थाइजाइड ये भी आती है 
we have Velsartan plus hemlodipine combination, we have Velsartan plus hemlodipine plus thiazide combination in variable dosages, which we are commonly using. But now today there is a launch of a new arrival, which is perindopil, amlodipine and indepamide. And ranges I think every range is there, perindopil 4 and 8 both. Uh, perindopil 5 and 10, 10. amlodipine 5, yeah, and endapamide and amlodipine and endapamide and 5. And additionally, I think you have perindopril plus amlodipine as well, which is I think there. You have amlodipine plus endapamide as well. So, every range is there only issue with this kind of single pill combination is tolerability. If your patient is tolerating ACE inhibitor, but for my own choice would be this combination. But the only thing is tolerance. For that I think this patient as our patient was on previously on LRAPIL. Most of the time you use three pills in patient who is already taking medication is not controlled. So, one way or the other you get an idea whether your patient is previously tolerating ACE or not. If he is tolerating, then there is no issue in writing. But if he is unknown, that is the big issue you have to judge. But overall, considering beneficial effect of indepamide with every range of their an edge of ACE over ARBs. It's Still, ARBs are non-inferior, not superior to ACE in terms of vesculoprotected effect. So, considering that wealth of data with ACE inhibitor, I personally think that this combination has potential if your patient is tolerating and a good choice for patients. So, let us conclude our presentations. We started with that most of hypertensive patient may not be optimally controlled. And this is international data. Even in US, you cannot found 100 percent of your patients who are totally having control and targeted blood pressure. And we know that clinical benefit occur when BP is lower to optimal level. Dawa bhi le raha ho or exact target achieve na ho to fayda nahi hai. And to achieve blood pressure goal, combination therapy is often preferred. And preferred combination, I think still we have the existing one and new one. Both can be used as a preferred. Finally, in conclusion, I would say data suggests ACE ARB plus calcium better combination that we already are following. Nowadays, we rarely write thiazide plus ACE ARB. It is always calcium channel blocker plus ACE or ARB. But considering vascular organ and uh, vascular organ protection and compliance and adequate blood pressure control, I personally think that perindopril plus amlodipine plus endepamide offer a good alternative to existing single pill combinations. With that, I am just ending. Before ending my presentation, this a lot of people knowing that, but if you do not know, that is the my YouTube channel. You can get a lot of academic videos on it for general patients as well as yourself. You can go and see those and this is my page and this is also going live on the page as well. So, you can get a lot of things on these two. Thanks for your attention. Nowadays, we have a lot of the young population less than 40 years of age. So, on 
what patient you gonna devise that this patient need a pharmacological, non pharmacological or a pharmacological therapy? Because if we calculate the risk is less than like is more than forty years of age. So how would you decide that? Actually these guidelines ye jo hai na, ye koi Quran hadith nahi hoti hai. These are just guides. Give you a road map. At the end of the day, it's your personal judgment and an overall holistic view of your patient to decide which thing is beneficial for which patients. So it doesn't mean that if your calculation evidence is for 40 and above, that you can't apply this to less than 40. It's no way written that you can't apply it. But certainly in those situations, we usually consider if you got a patient with 39 years with diabetes, hypertension, slight renal impairment, would you keep his blood pressure 130-80 or not? So that's the way to judge. Uh, assess your comprehensive risk score of your patient in a way, not exact calculation, but simulate. Simulate in a way that just judge, judge whether your patient will got benefit according to whatever evidence is available or not. It's not that age which matter, but all other things you have to combine together to get answer that which patient needs what treatment at what stage of the disease. One more question is that uh, in, in, in your own experience and also in the panel's experts' opinion, should we start like if a patient comes with the 160 and 100 per patient and you will confirm the diagnosis that the person has a hypertension? So, what would be the is it starting the single pill combination straight away would be the better strategy or doing a single pill? With higher dose and a lifestyle modification would be the better choice. I will take help of my experts <laughs> <laughs> for that. I think. Uh, can I have a mic, please? Yeah. 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 Before I respond, uh, respond to your question, I'm uh, very thankful to Dr. Fawad who has yeah. elaborated this whole issue nicely and give how it's uh, uh, now, how it become very easy to cope with this silent killer. Initially it was very difficult. Now your question is that uh, uh, what is our experience that how, how can I start treatment to a patient newly diagnosed uh, whose blood pressure is 160 by 100 the first time. There are clear cut nice guidelines that if patient is younger then start with AC inhibitor younger than 55 years and if he is older than 55 years the better to go with calcium channel blo blockers because of pathological changes in older patient respond to calcium channel blocker that's uh, vasodilator. But uh, truly speaking if this kind of patient comes to me I used to start a combination of smaller dose of both drugs. Basically they work number one they are more effective and they are more tolerated as uh, Dr. Fawaz has clearly defined in his presentation. So basically this is era of poly, uh, multiple drugs in single pill. So I advocate to go with uh, average or moderate doses of two drugs in spite of going higher doses with one drug. Thank you. If I got your answer, you were taking consideration a patient whose patient's target is above the baseline. Is that kind of patient or mildly increased blood pressure? Like 150, 160. Yeah, you think that you have to use two drugs. Now, commonly what we do, I personally, what I uh, used to do, most of the old patients have some of the comorbids that they have to have a beta blocker, either IHD or tachyarrhythmia or even base. Young patients, they are sometimes baseline tachycardic. So, you have two drugs, but the drugs teen kar dete hain taaki over treat bhi ho jaye usme fir aapke paas single pill mein bhi variable combinations hain ki kuch moderate dosages mein low dosages mein jaise abhi tak hum valsartan aur uh, amlodipine jaise use kiya karte the to thodi si beta blocker aapne moderate dose mein de di aur 80 oblique 5 wo de di so actually what you did you are covering three pathophysiologies now with be adding beta blocker you are taking care of sympathetic activity and heart rate as well to bahut zyada effective but single pill combination is there in management everywhere. Or bahut hi mild hai aur blood pressure ki wo rate ka koi issue nahi hai. To usually we start with single pill combination. Kyunki goli to ek hi leni hai. To aap do se achha effective control le le. So it's very common. Uh, now people are very rarely. Bahut hi mild BP or wo to conservative se hi kabu ho jata hai. 
उसके लिए तो दवा की जरूरत नहीं है जिसको आपको सिंगल पिल देनी पड़ रही है उसके बाद भी रह रहा है फिर यूजली यू टेक टू ड्रग्स इन अ सिंगल पिल ये कॉमन है एनी डॉक्टर नवाज यू वॉन्ट टू एड एनी थिंग इंपॉर्टेंस so you should know about the techniques and the equipments what type of equipments you are using that's very important sometimes you use the uh, spirometer the mercury some automatic uh, apparatus they are available in the markets if you can compare the manual and with these are there are some difference in these the latest guidelines we go in detail about the latest guidelines they use the automatic bp apparatus and mostly the these bp uh bp pressures were taken by the nurses and staff so just keep and that's why they have decreased the the targets from 140 to 130 80 and these are population so manual like there is a difference they they uh, and if you go to the detail through these guidelines they say that the, even the the persons who, uh, who wait for the bp check up with automated their blood pressure is around in a man is lower in the automatic bp but in comparison to manual checking so say there are some targets you should always keep in mind things uh, otherwise the number of pills so this depends upon your judgment uh, the what type of patients you are dealing and uh, how much uh, he is uh, complex do their lifestyle modification so th- is this person is first time know about the uh, about the blood pressure he doesn't care about their lifestyle before that so you will, i think you have to first concentrate on lifestyle you start with the single drug uh if not as fine you combine with the two drugs with uh, low dose low dose combination and then you can go for this so general way how to get so always keep the comorbidities and the risk factor in mind when you treating any patient or blood pressure keep on these two things comorbidities and the target organ also should, should be taken so i think so i think uh, this is a nice interesting section from the company and they have provided the this prayer for and uh, thank you uh, thank you very much thank you so uh, for the conclude uh, finally conclusion uh, i request you to show you the brand uh, triplexin a slide of triplexin i request you dr ibar to show you the slides thank you gorgeous uh, ladies and gentlemen may i present you the portions of the slides these are basically uh, uh two are the lower ones and then two 